Hey, it's Angela from the blog Angela Marie Made. Welcome back to my DIY entryway makeover on a budget series. In part one, I shared how Brandon and I built our DIY built-in cabinet and door on a budget. And in part two, I shared how we finished the custom built-in with a DIY built-in bench. I'll link both videos below so you can check them out. I'm excited to finish transforming our entryway and share the full cost breakdown in this final part three of the series. Looking back, when we first moved into our home, the entryway had yellow walls and no storage. A few years ago, we painted the walls a light gray and added our DIY hall tree. With such a small entryway space that's really just this partial wall and nook, I really wanted more hidden storage and a larger bench. This area is where we grab our keys and bags and take our shoes off. So I thought custom built-ins would be the perfect solution for better storage and seating. I also just want the entryway to feel more welcoming and more of my style. I really can't stand that orange wood railing either. For the design to make the entryway feel more welcoming, I really want to use calm, beautiful pink colors, warm, natural wood tones, and add character and coziness with a DIY wall treatment as well as adding some organic natural textures through the decor. After the construction of our built-ins were finished in part one and two, it was time to start our DIY accent wall. Good morning. Today we're going to be starting our ship up wall, which I'm super excited about. I think it's gonna add some great character and texture behind the built-ins. One thing we did realize after installing the built-ins is that we should have installed the shiplap wall first because it's a lot harder to do the shiplap around the crown molding now. It would have been easier to just install our shiplap and then put the crown molding up against it. But I think it's okay. We're going to try to cut a custom piece of shiplap to go around the molding and then caulk it so you can't even tell that we didn't do it that way. For this shiplap wall, we're going to be using a faux shiplap wall treatment using plywood instead of real shiplap. It's a more budget-friendly way to go, and I've used this way multiple times. It's very similar to our vertical shiplap wall, which I'll link that video below, except that we're going to be doing horizontal faux shiplap boards. All right, let's get started with this shiplap. For the faux shiplap, we used pre-sanded quarter-inch thick plywood ripped into eight-inch wide planks. I sanded the plywood board edges to help prep them for paint. To work the shiplap around our crown molding, Brandon used a scrap crown molding board and traced the shape of it onto one of our shiplap boards. And then he used a Dremel and a jigsaw to cut the shape out of the board. method worked really well, we just need to add some caulk around the cut line for a seamless transition. Normally I would start shiplap at the bottom of the wall, but because of this special cut, we started with this board and made sure it was level and then attached it to the wall with bread nails. I made sure I was nailing through at least one stud as well. I actually have a full tutorial on my blog on how to paint shiplap walls, which I'll link below, but with this faux shiplap method, it really helps to make the painting process easier by painting the shiplap board edges and gaps as you go. I measured and cut each board to size for the wall and created the shiplap look by using nickels between each board to create my shiplap gap. When I got to the angled part of our wall, I just held the board up in place and marked where I needed to make special cuts and angled cuts. Then I used our Dremel and miter saw to actually make the cut.
For the bottom and top boards, I cut the width of the board to size for the remaining wall space. To hide the cupboard edges along the stairs, I used a piece of corner molding, which works great. Brandon helped me wrap the paint prep up with caulking, which is one of my least favorite projects, while I took care of filling in all of the nail holes with spackle. The next morning, I tackled priming the shiplap and built-ins. So I'd thrown on my same paint clothes from the day before and didn't realize that my shirt was inside out. <laughs> I guess that's just mom life. Luckily, I did realize it though after doing the primer paint cuts and I fixed it before moving on. I decided to prime and paint our orange wood railing and I gave it a light sanding to start. I thought about using a gel stain or doing a whitewash on this railing, but ultimately I thought three wood tones was just too much since the floor is a laminate wood and I'm planning on staining the wood bench top as well. I hope I made the right decision to prime and paint this railing, but I do know that it felt really satisfying to paint over that orange wood. Once the primer had dried, it was time to paint. I really want the built-ins to be the feature of this entryway with a pretty color, so I picked Simply White and Eggshell by Benjamin Moore for the paint color for the shiplap walls and railing. For the floor trim and the ceiling crown, we used Simply White again, but in a semi-gloss sheen. I love this white paint color. It's one of my go-to white paints, and it's such a fresh and pretty white paint color. While painting the shiplap, I did have to use a painter's tool to make sure that no paint seeped in between my gap lines before it dried. By the time Brandon and I started adding the second coat of white paint, I was really loving how fresh the white looked in our entryway, especially on the railing. I'm really happy that I did decide to go ahead and paint it white. All right, now it's time to figure out a color for our built-ins. I know I want a calm, beautiful color that will complement our barn doors because our barn doors are on the opposite side of our entryway in our living room. So since they're gonna be in the same area, I really want the look to be complimentary. The barn door color is Oyster Bay by Sherwin Williams. I went to the paint store and grabbed all of the darker paint swatches that I liked and that were in the same color family as the Oyster Bay color. After looking at all of the paint swatches in our actual entryway, I was able to narrow it down to four paint colors that I wanted to get samples for, but we had some trouble getting samples. There's currently a paint shortage going on, so I wasn't able to get samples at Sherwin-Williams or Lowe's, but fortunately we could get some samples done at Home Depot. So I'm going to go ahead and put these samples on some cardstock and let them dry, and then I'll take them back into our entryway and see how they look and try to pick a paint color. When I was looking at the four paint samples in our entryway, I knew right away that ripe olive was way too dark and I eliminated it. I was really undecided about the remaining three options, but I decided to go with retreat since it was a nice medium color between the three options and it looked really good in the morning, day, and evening light. I still wasn't 100% sure though after getting the paint from the store. So I started with painting the door only and then brought it into the room to see how I liked it. I really like the 
paint color retreat, but there's something about it that I'm unsure of. I'm not sure if it's too dark or what it is. So I'm starting to lean more towards the evergreen fog. The evergreen fog would definitely be a safer paint choice for me, but that means I'd have to spend another $24 on paint as well as the time to go get a new can of paint and repainting the door. Also, the colors for these two paints are reading different on camera versus in real life, so I know it's hard to get a good idea of what it actually looks like. I'm so torn on what color to do, so I'm going to try painting a larger sample on a piece of paper and see how it looks and what I think. I also asked on Instagram, on stories, what everybody thought, and a side note, you can follow me at Made on Instagram. But let me know in the comments below what color you would pick, either the darker retreat or the lighter evergreen fog. So after doing a larger paint sample of the evergreen fog and holding up our brass handle with it, which is what we're going to use on our door, I don't like the brass and the evergreen fog together as much as I do with the retreat and the brass handle. I think I'm gonna stick with the retreat. I really like the richer, darker contrast and it's such a beautiful color. It's also Brandon's favorite pick too, which is important, right? <laughs> now we can finish painting the built-ins. There was one more color decision to make after picking a paint color, and that's the bench top stain color. I wanted to do a darker honey brown color, so I tested out different stain options and combinations on the back of the bench top. It's always good to test stains on the actual wood you're going to stain because all wood can take stain differently. I ended up using one coat of special walnut and one coat of early American. Then I used two coats of polyurethane for the top coat. Once we were finished painting the built-ins, we attached the door back on the hinges and installed the door handle. Because we saved so much money by DIYing these built-ins, I splurged on this brass handle from Rejuvenation that I absolutely love. I also splurged on the matching wall hooks, which are perfect for adding some extra pretty entryway storage. We finished off the built-ins by attaching the bench top to the frame and then building DIY shelves for the cabinet. I used a mix of leftover plywood and scrap wood to build the shelves. We made them adjustable and they're going to add some much needed extra storage.
I'm using the shelves for our son's toy overflow and a bunch of other random entryway items like keys, baskets, sunscreen, dog supplies, and more. I'm loving all this extra storage with this new cabinet. I actually don't have enough to fill it at the moment, but I'm sure I will really soon. For the decor, Target has some really cute pieces that I think are perfect for the look and color palette I'm trying to go for. I don't want to add too much decor to the space because it's the entryway, so I want it to be on the minimal side, but still pretty and functional. Target had a bunch of faux plants in stock. Picking out a faux plant though, it seems to be just as hard as a real one. They all have different shapes. For a lot of the decor, I had to order it online. I found the perfect baskets for under the bench at Pottery Barn, but unfortunately they were sold out, so I found this great alternative basket at landsend.com, which I didn't even know they sold home decor there, <laughs> but they were $13 cheaper each, and they're the perfect size and color, and I love how they look under the bench. I couldn't decide what greenery, pillows, or runners I wanted to add, so I ordered a few different options to try out and see what looks best. I narrowed down the pillow options easily, but the rug and plant options weren't as easy. I really don't know what to do about the plants. I feel like this nook next to the bench really needs a plant and some kind of greenery, but I just don't love the look of these faux plants. What do you think? I really thought this rug was the perfect color, but after rolling it out, it's looking really blue to me, and I know it's hard to see on camera versus in real life, but I think the blue in the rug is now making the green-pink color in the built-ins look kind of blue-green, which is not what I was going for. Unfortunately, I don't think it's gonna work anymore, and I'm gonna, I guess, try the white and gray rug and see if that works any better. Although that one has stripes, so, that might not work either. <laughs> and then I guess I just won't use a runner, but I, I'll try that next. All right, I like this rug a lot better than the other one. It's pretty neutral, but it adds that cozy factor that I want, so it's gonna work. <laughs> After taking some time to think about the faux plant options, I really didn't like either of them. I found that I had an extra basket on hand from our bathroom makeover that worked perfectly in this corner. I ended up just using it and I think it looks great for the size of the space. Although I don't have any greenery to put in it at the moment, I have some flowers from the store that I think look really cute in it for this makeover. And then going forward, we can use the basket for extra shoes or scarves or whatever we need by the entryway. And that's it for the decor. What do you guys think of our DIY entryway makeover? Let me know in the comments below. I want to quickly share the full budget breakdown with you and what a DIY project like this actually costs. Our total entryway makeover costs $630, which I think is a great price for the final look and value added. The decor and hardware alone was about 40% of the budget at $259, and I splurged a lot on custom pieces. Less expensive options could have been used for even more savings. Overall, I'm really happy with the final budget and I hope this breakdown is helpful to see if you're thinking of doing a similar project. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this entryway makeover series. I think this is my favorite home improvement project ever. 
Although we faced a lot of challenges, especially with the built-ins and the store, <laughs> I think it came together beautifully and I'm really happy with it. If you want to see more DIY and home decor projects, make sure to subscribe and follow along. We have some smaller DIY projects and another big room makeover coming up soon. Thanks again for watching.